Sorry, I'm late. Ah, uh, yes. Spock. The most Leonard Nimoy looking stupid fact. What's your excuse for being late? Well, I was running diagnostics on the last alien planet we visited. Ah, uh, yes. Careful on the floor. It was a successful mission. Indeed, it was, sir. But it turns out, in addition to bringing diplomacy and good tidings, we brought diseases that went up 90% of the population. My God! <laughs> My flood has been down this whole time. <laughs> Why haven't you noticed? Oh, I did notice it. <laughs>
show you incredible things. Magic, madness, heaven, sin. Saw you there and I thought, oh my god, look at that face. You look like my next mistake. Lost the game, wanna play. Hey, hey, no money, suit a tie. I can read like a magazine. Ain't it funny? Rumors fly. So it's gonna be forever Or it's gonna go down in flames You can tell me when it's over If the high was worth the pain Got a long list of ex-lovers They'll tell you I'm insane Cause I got a blank space, baby And I'll write your name Cherry lips, crystal skies I can show you incredible
Yeah, he wants to tell the story, but he thinks he shouldn't bother. Living without his father, lives a struggle with his mother, separated from his brother. Just wants some closure, maybe for his family to be a little closer. The emotions so ferocious, it eats away at his soul. Hard parts like Paul feel so love lost with every song that he drops. He just can't do it right. Feelings is always tight, just might make a suicide so he can see the other light. Every time that he cries the other wise, he just keeps his thoughts in his mind. Just behind the scenes, man, his wrist will bleed. Just thinking what the damn work never leaves him in his boy's height with that skinny jeans. But they don't know, he'd be so depressed. Better off if he just rests. No therapist to help, and he's all by himself. And he trusts no one else. He was only 12 years old, and he's sleeping on the kitchen chairs. And his heart was shattered, and it can't be repaired. This is perfect, and police will never benefit. Always hope you get all the help and up. Home was just another suck up. Doing nothing but mess up. And then she broke the hell up. So we start as well. We when he started the poor brother. Cause he feels the sun all up on his own at home. With no toxics in his phone. Used to get fully to judge. Used to hate fight and always got beat to the punch. It didn't take much. Just one touch of pride. So we started to realize that he was on the rise. So he was on the rise to become a savage and survive. Don't know if he believes in God. So he ain't blessed. Not afraid to die, they need to stop making threats Everybody just telling them you like your promising And that's just brutal honesty, kids are so often we Like this an everyday thing, just so commonly He has a lot of dreams just to be a prodigy But he didn't have a talent logically So he sat there, and he picked up a pen and a pad And he just sat there, and he developed a vision Got his mind going faster than a vision Just thinking to himself, you gotta do something or we'll end up hungry, oh y'all know what he did So we started writing and recording And his brain so started to open, he had a heart But now was gone to be broken Nothing there to be solid, just hoping One day he had a dream, he was holding, hoping He had a purpose, got sick and tired of feeling worthless Like God damn, I gotta be a man and give a helping hand to my fam It's about me, wasn't someone else to believe you got it all wrong You wanna know how I'm feeling? Listen to this song, my mind going rants and going to as a kid feeling abandoned, you can get mad at me. Freedom of speech is our first amendment. No, I'm not pretending. If you're my fan, you'll pay attention to my confession. I love you all. You know who you are. I gotta hold it down. I gotta stay strong. They've been asking me these questions. Now they answer. I'm getting sick of being misplaced. Stop acting like it's my fault. Yeah, you're the one who walked out. You're the one who made your choice. Make some noise to the kids that are out there. Struggle in any type of way. Make some noise to the kids that can't even win a crowd. I hope you all know that your family is proud. Shout out to the kids that get despised and that petrified. Just so they can go to school And they get bullied cause they get told that they're not cool Just remember, you can see your path You don't have to be blind, you'll be doing just fine The number one thing that's on my wish list Wish list to wish this crowd a Merry Christmas Push your hands up people!
doesn't matter why I was there, where the air was sterile, the sheets sting. It doesn't matter that I was hooked up to this thing that buzzed and beeped every time my heart leaped like a man whose face has in God's hands and began to catch an airplane or a world. It doesn't matter that I was curled up like a fist protesting death, or that every breath was either hard labor or a hard time, or that I'm either always too hot or too cold. It doesn't matter because my hospital roommate wore Star Wars pants, and he's nine years old. His name is Lewis. And I don't have to ask what he's got. The bald head and the skin and bone frame speaks volumes. The game boy and the fellow pillow boom, but they're trying to make him feel at home because he's going to be here a while. I manage to smile the first time I see him, and it feels like the biggest lie I have ever told. So I hold my breath. So if at any moment now he's going to call me on it. I hold my breath as I'm scared of a 57 pound boy who's hooked up to machine who's been watching me and maybe I got him pegged all wrong, like maybe he's bionic or some shit. So I look away. Like I just made eye contact with a gang member who's got a rap sheet the length of electron dumb mistakes politicians have made. I look away like he's getting my life back. The moment I have something to trade, I damn near pull out my pack and say, cigarette? But my fear subsides and the moment I realize Lewis is all show and tell. He's got everything from a shotgun shell to a cross footage with them all in context like, see this is from a shooting range and see this is from a weird girl. I watch his hands curl around a conflict and a tie tap and realize that every knickknack is a treasure and every treasure's got a story and every time I don't think I can handle it anymore he hits me with another story. He says, see this is from my father, see this is from my mother, see this is from that weird girl, see this is from my sister. It took me about two days to figure out that that weird girl is his sister. It took him about two hours to after she left for him to figure out he missed her. They visit every day and say well past visiting hours because for them that term doesn't apply. But when they do leave, Lewis and I are left alone. He says the worst part about being sick is that you get all of your ice cream you ask for. And he says the worst part about that is realizing that there's nothing more that they can do for you. He says, ice cream can't make everything okay. And there's no easy way of asking. I already know what he's gonna say, but maybe he used to say it, so I ask him anyway, are you scared? Lewis doesn't even lower his voice when he says, fuck yeah. I listen to a nine-year-old boy say the word fuck, like he's the 30 year old man with a nosebleed being lowered into a shark tank. He's got a right to it. And if it takes this kid a curse word to help him get through it, then I want to teach him to swear like the devil's sitting there taking notes of the pen to have before. I can bet that Lewis is nine years old, he says, Please don't tell my dad. He asked me if I believe in angels. And before I realized I don't have the heart to tell him, I tell him not lately. So I just lay there, begging for him to hate me. But he doesn't know how to, so he never does. Lewis loves like a man who lived at a time before God gave religion to men, left to them to figure out what hate was. He never greets me with silence, only smiles and a patience I've never seen in someone who knows they're dying. I'm trying so hard not to remind him that in a couple of days I'll be out of here smoking cigarettes and taking my life for granted and he'll still be planted in this bed like a flower that refused to grow. I've been with him for five days and all I really know is Lewis loves to pull feathers out of his pillow and watch them float to the ground. It's almost as if he's a philosopher instead of a scientist ready to say it's crabby that's been getting us down. But the truth is, there's not enough miracles to go around, kid. There's too many people positioning God with a winning lotto ticket. And for every answer prayer, there's a crick with arthritis. And the other reason we can't find answers is because the search priory didn't invite us to lose right now. The crickets have arthritis. So there's no music. No symphony of nature is flying to crescendo as if we could bend halos to keep melody with the way our hearts beat. We must meet silence with the same level of noise as the parents of dying nine-year-old boys take when they make a living and talk with heaven. We must shout until we shatter our own vibration and let our lives echo and grow, echo and grow, echo and grow, grow distant. Grow distant enough to know that as far as our efforts go, we don't always get our vibe. But I swear to whatever God I can find in the time I have left, I'm going to remember you, kid. I'm going to tell your stories so often as every story you told me, and every time I'll tell it, I'll say, see, there's bravery in this world. There's six and a half billion people curled up like fists protesting death with every breath we breathe has to be given back. A nine-year-old boy taught me that. So hold your breath. The same way to hold a pen where I thank you notes in your skin to every tree that gave you that breath to hold. 
and let it go. As if you've grown old and finally understand something about having to give back, let it go like a laugh attack. When you have really good sex, the black eye will be worth it. Because what's your night worth? You've got a story to tell. And why wield the word like worth if you've got nothing to sell? People have dropped pennies that are wishing well, so the cost of a desire is equal to that of a thought. But if you've got expectations, expect others to buy your exact same room at the same price of hard work, hang in, hold on mentality, like I accepted a challenge, so challenge me, like I brought a knife to this gunfight, but then I unbucked a mountain to bring that shit up half practice. Lewis and I cracked this world wide open, found the prize inside, because we never lied to ourselves. We never told ourselves to be easy or undemanding. So we sing in our own vibrations and they're anxious to stop in mid-flight, eavesdrop, pluck feathers from their wings, and write demands that God's hands take the time to catch you. So that even if God doesn't, it wasn't because we didn't try. I don't often believe in angels, but on the day I left Lewis, he pulled a feather from his pillow and said, this is for you. I half expect him to say, see, this is the first one I grew. I don't feel 
next we have Andrew Fireman. <laughs>
She 
this song's called Floating Worlds. Position. I'm 
sorry I hope that you will Did you ever make it out at town? Nothing ever happens It's no secret 